everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So today let me explain you what is futile cycle. Now the futile cycle as the name says, so futile here, so nothing comes out of this. So it is basically a, just no, no significant metabolic output is coming out of this. That's what is the futile cycle here. So why, why our cells will have futile cycles at some point in time? And what is the meaning of this futile cycle? So note that whenever uh, opposing metabolic pathways are going on simultaneously, so basically uh, no significant metabolic product is coming out of this. So that kind of pathways are referred as futile cycles or futile pathways. Now let me give you an example. So best example that I can give you is uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Now in the glycolysis, there is a step where fructose 6-phosphate, uh, so fructose 6-phosphate will be converted into fructose 1,6-biphosphate. So this job it will be done by an enzyme called TFK1 that is phosphofructokinase 1. So during this process there will be breakdown of ATP, adenosine triphosphate is converted into adenosine diphosphate. So where the one of the phosphate is incorporated into fructose 6-phosphate to make fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Okay, now that is the glycolysis. This is a glycolytic step, glycolysis here. Now the opposing pathway is gluconeogenesis. Now in the gluconeogenesis what happens? So fructose 6-phosphate, sorry, fructose 1,6-biphosphate. So it will be converted back into fructose 6-phosphate. This job it will be done by uh, fr uh, fructose 1,6-biphosphatase enzyme. Fructose 1,6-biphosphatase enzyme is going to catalyze that reaction. So during this reaction what happens, so there will be this phosphatase, basically it incorporates water, there will be incorporation of water molecule, H2O is incorporated and inorganic phosphate will be released, PI will be released there. So thereby you are reconverting that into fructose 6-phosphate. So basically what happened here, so you have used ATP, make fructose on 6-phosphate, and then you break that fructose and 6 phosphate, uh, 1 6 phosphate back into fructose 6 phosphate. So, when you break this ATP here, so there will be terminal phosphate is broken. So, because ATP is broken down into ADP and the phosphate is incorporated, incorporated at the first position. So, there will be release of heat during this time. This is the metabolic energy, metabolic heat. Heat is released here. Okay. And also the fructose and 6 bisphosphate also has got energy there. So when you release this inorganic phosphate, that will also release heat. So it means adenosine triphosphate plus water molecule, it is giving you ADP plus PI. If you simplify this particular uh, pathway here in terms of energy takes, so in glycolysis you are spending ATPs, in uh, gly gluconeogenesis you are adding water there and the reaction it will be ADP plus PI plus heat and this is what you get there okay so overall there will be generation of heat and this reaction if it goes on like this so fructose 6-phosphate into fructose and 6-bisphosphate and fructose and 6-bisphosphate back into fructose 6-phosphate by gluconeogenesis so it means it is just going on like this. So nothing is coming out of this. That is what is futile cycle. So the only thing that comes out of this is a heat. Heat is generated. So I would, I would, I would not say personally. I would not say this is a futile thing here because the metabolic pathways trying to generate heat and this may be useful under certain conditions. During that condition only, this futile cycles will go on. Otherwise. Uh, these antagonistic pathways here so or the opposing pathways, uh, there is no meaning if they just continue to go on like this. So there must be some purpose. So I would not really agree with the terminology futile here because you are going to generate heat. Anyway, for the sake of concept, just remember this, this, this is what is the concept of futile cycle where you are, your, your uh, substrate and the product, they are just recircling and at the end you are going to generate heat here. So this kind of generation of heat 
it can be referred as non shivering thermogenesis so the non shivering non shivering thermogenesis this is a non shivering thermogenesis so in non shivering thermogenesis so your there will be generation of heat here and that heat will maintain the body temperature imagine like in neonates where the brown adipose tissue is more and lot of energy near heat has to be generated to maintain the body temperature in the new environment when the baby uh, when the birth occurs and the baby come out come out into the new world uh, where the temperature is lower than the mother soon so temperature need to be maintained so thermogenesis need to go on and brown adipose tissue they will uh, uh, express unco uncouplers and try to generate heat and this is another way to generate heat making this fertile cycle and also in uh, uh, hyperthyroidism in hyperthyroidism there is more and more t3 and t4 synthesized at this t3 t4 they uncouple the electron transport chain process and also they will run this kind of futile cycle so thereby more and more heat is generated so that means uh, a patient with hyperthyroidism uh, will have increased body temperature and also normally when the body temp temperature drops like exposure to cold or like exposure to um, uh, severe cold temperatures uh, living in uh, some of the uh, geographical areas so this kind of fetal cycles will uh, uh, maintain the body temperature so that's why their basal metabolic rate will be higher so i would not say completely this is a fetal thing because heat is generated heat is generated to maintain the body temperature so this is just one example of fetal cycle so you can uh, get uh, i can give you another example that is glycogen breakdown and uh, glycogen synthesis glycogenolysis and glycogenesis both are happening pathways and if you run like that so there will be generation of heat because uh, UD, utp there it will be converted into udp and udp is uh, further converted into epi and all that so uh, there will be a release of energy in the form of heat. So this is a simple concept here, so which is referred as a fetal cycle. And also in hibernating animals, another example. In the hibernating animals, so fetal cycle can go on to make sure that uh, their uh, body temperature is maintained when the temperature is really cold outside. Okay. So I hope uh, this video has helped you in understanding a fertile cycle if you have any question drop that question down in the comment section below and uh, make sure to uh, click the subscription button down there so that you get regular updates whenever i make uh, videos like this and uh, thanks for watching and see you in my next video